online lecture series. My name is Stevie Wakarafi. I am uh, the Māori liaison for um, MIT and um, I'm originally from Rotorua but um, have been working in South Auckland for over over 10 years now so I hope you enjoy. Kia ora. Salofalava and fakalofalaya tuke matuluosi. My name is Gina. I am the Schools and Youth Liaison here at the Manukau Institute of Technology. I am half Samoan, half Niuean, and it is a pleasure and honour to have you all tune in with us today for today's live. Um, so take a few seconds to settle in, grab something to eat, grab a drink, um, and we hope you enjoy the rest of the series. Today we are joined by uh, Case Bucklands from our School of Maritime, and we are going to go straight into it. So Case, um, first question up, tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah, good morning, uh, Gina and Stevie. Um, hey, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity to chair uh, our New Zealand Maritime School programs with you and, and with all the students, so thank you. My name, as what you said already, is Kees Buckens. I was born in the Netherlands and I was moved to New Zealand and I settled in New Zealand in 1994 in Auckland here in Remoera. Uh, I started teaching at the New Zealand Maritime School in 2001 and I'm currently the curriculum leader for the academic part of all the nautical programs and I also run the largest full bridge mission uh, full mission bridge simulator in the southern hemisphere wow yeah so my background was uh, my previous life basically I was a captain at sea I was on working on large cruise ships and I was sailing around the world and was uh, visiting ports in all the continents around the world and um, yeah so we de deliver uh, three different programs here at the New Zealand Maritime School we deliver programs uh, in the nautical science to become captain of any ship in the world we deliver marine engineering programs that makes you a chief engineer or in charge of the whole technical operation of any large ships and we deliver a diploma in electro technology that makes you in charge of all the electrotechnology components on a large ship. All programs that we deliver, they are full time and they are about three years for your initial qualification. And that is uh, roughly equivalent to about uh, what a university study, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, that's really intense. <laughs> that's really intense. Thank you for sharing that with us. So I'm sure um, it has really been official for our students. So um, tell us about the the entry requirements. So what what are the students needing to get into um, the the programs that you deliver? Well, Stevie, uh, we had a review of our entry criteria a few years ago, and we've dropped all of them. So we like uh, the student to have a bit of understanding in math and physics, but we yeah. can pathway you into a career at sea with any uh, or, or non-entry uh, qualification. So NCA level two is, is bottom line, of course, but from there we can pathway you in, into a career at sea. But if you intend to become the captain or the chief engineer, then really you should have some math and physics in your, um, in your programs that you're studying at the moment. Okay. Awesome. So maths and physics will be the top subjects for a school student at the moment. Yeah, that runs like a red line through the whole program. We'll come back and, and, and that is a good background to have. Okay. Awesome. Any sort of bridging course to get in or, you know, to help alleviate if they don't have those credits? No, the way our program is set up uh, is a, a 17 weeks, that is a bridging program actually, okay. we call it the NZ2511, the Maritime Crewing, International Crewing, uh, versus the, the domestic, that's a different program, and that gives you the qualification to become a rating on board a ship, so that's the support persons on board a ship as a deck crew or an engine crew, but our programs are really using that as a bridging program into our diploma programs, the level six programs, and that takes, including that uh, 17 weeks, about three years to complete, and then you become the watchkeeper on the nautical side or engine room side, or as an electrotechnical officer. Awesome, cool. Thank you so much for that, Case. Um, so next one, tell us a fun fact about yourself. 
<laughs> Fun fact about myself. <laughs> well, I was thinking about it a little bit when you asked me the question. And, and um, so when I was at sea, in the 21 years before I started teaching, I traveled about 2.6 kilometers at sea. And that's equivalent to about 65 times around the globe if you take it on the equator. Wow. <laughs> wow. Very, very experienced, we can tell. <laughs> Yes, yeah. Yeah, it was more than I thought it was, but anyway. <laughs> so is that like, sorry, um, I'm not um, a, a boat person. So does that mean like you've travelled from here to Australia or that? in terms of distance, how long is, is that? Well, you know, the, on the equator, if you go around the earth and the circumference yep. of the earth, and it is 65 times. <laughs> Definitely put that into perspective even more. <laughs> That is so awesome. That That's is so amazing. cool. Amazing. <laughs> All right. All right. Fun fact. <laughs> Far out. Okay. Wow. Okay. Getting a little excited. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so in terms of the program, what's the most appealing part about, um, yeah, the program that you deliver, right. um, and the uniqueness of it? What I believe is, um, you know, what we're looking for is leaders. Uh, the, the student that we accept, when, when he is on board the ship, he'll be a leader and in charge of a group of people and of the ship or the technical uh, environment of the ship. Now, my last ship uh, before I came here, it cost one billion US dollars to build. That is B with a, with a billion. Mm. And as a, as a junior officer, he's 20 or she's 21 years old. And you'll be in charge of on your watch of that whole ship, of the whole technical operation of that ship. So we're looking for people that have the stamina and to be in charge, actually, of a group of people to take that responsibility at a, at a very young age. And, and another item, I think, which is really exciting at the moment, in particular now in COVID-19, you know, nobody can travel anymore, it's restricted. Yet seafarers, all, all the people that we teach the, the job, Four, they continue traveling, they continue traveling the world because they are actually essential workers. And, you know, at the moment, 10,000 containers each week are drove, uh, sailed into Auckland, in Auckland wow. Harbour. And the ships are fuller than they've ever been before COVID-19. So there's a lot of hard work going on there and we keep traveling. So even when something like this happens, you continue working, but also you continue traveling uh, the globe. And, you, and finally, I think it's very important to realize that there's a huge demand for qualified officers, deck officers, engineering officers in the world, but also in New Zealand. The New Zealand ports are phoning me all every week. It's like, have you got more graduates to come to us? And, and our graduates, they need to go to sea for a, a number of years before they actually have the experience to become and be the managers in the ports of New Zealand. And uh, that is that is a, basically a, a very important function to keep New Zealand operating as a country because all our imports and exports are going via the ports, via the 17 ports that we have in New Zealand. And that's our graduates, they are stepping in those leadership positions in the, in the ports of New Zealand. It doesn't matter if it's in Otago or in Auckland or, or maybe a North Port, they're all over New Zealand. Mm, awesome, that's so new. So we just want to, I guess, honour and thank all the essential workers that are out there <laughs> sailing, I guess, on ships and doing all the hard mahi out there, getting our <laughs> our local supermarkets stocked up and, mm. you know, our um, our people in Aotearoa as well. Uh, thank you so much for this uh, case. Um, so, another quick question. If you were a student on this programme, uh, what types of qualities or traits do you recommend they bring with, you, with them? Well, what I just now said already, we, we're looking for leaders, actually. We're leaders mm. for leadership functions. So if you've been a leader in a class or of the tennis team or the, the rugby team, those those are the people that are really be suitable for our program because once you finish that program, that's what you're going to do. You're going to lead, you're going to manage mm. teams of people, teams of the ship, and then eventually you come ashore and you'll be leaders of the port, uh, leaders, uh, managers of ports and, and, and operations or in engineering departments in, in repair facilities, etc. Mm, awesome. So is there like an opportunity, you know, because I understand some people, it takes a while for them to step out of their, you know, out of their shell. Is there capacity in the program where they could 
possibly do that or, you know, shine at all? Oh, well, yes, we, within the program, actually, uh, one of the fun things that they're going to do is in, uh, we have, as I mentioned already, the largest full mission bridge simulator in the Southern Hemisphere. So students in the nautical programs are going to spend five weeks in, in that uh, simulator and we put them on in charge of, of a large container ship, a large tanker or a large cruise ship and we put them in any of the ports in the world and we make them maneuver that ship uh, and as they would do in, in the real world, uh, in nighttime, in daytime, in rain, in beautiful weather. And in the engineering part as well, we've got a, a full mission engineering simulator and they're going to act as if they are on that tanker or on that passenger ship and they carry out all these tasks. So there's really a lot of fun in the study as well as they are doing that alongside all the theory and, and all the practical studies that they have to do. Gosh. Gosh. Okay, so is that like... Um part of the, the project work that they'll have to do, essentially. Yeah, we don't call it project work. We, we, we deliver everything in a modular format, and these are right. some of the modules that we deliver. Okay. Mm. Okay. Thank you for that, Keith. Yeah, yeah. No worries. Um, so at the moment, Keith, what is the current um, earnings or average salary for a person, I guess, for a maritime graduate? Okay, so the graduates that we have from our program, typically they become the watchkeeper officer on, on the ship, and I would expect them to walk away uh, fifty to $60,000 per year as oh, a wow. salary. And you should compare that to the uh, income of, of a university graduate, really, after three years of uni, what do you have there? Mm -hmm. Once you then... Uh, be promoted and, and go through the ranks and you have to come back for a little bit more study for your chiefs and master ticket, uh, you will uh, easily go over $100,000 per year. So I would expect wow. uh, the captain or the chief engineer to earn somewhere between one hundred and twenty dollars to $150,000 per year. And then when you in your mid to late 30s, you come ashore and you become that manager in shore, become the, the pilot, you will start earning $160,000, $200,000, plus upwards yeah. from there as, as an income. So it's, it's really good, uh, good income, uh, plus also you enjoy it. It is really, it's, every day is different. No, no two days are the same. You don't have this boring, let's go to work again, sit behind the computer. You're actually out and doing practical things uh, and get really paid for it very well. Wow. I might have a change of career after yeah, this combo. Yeah, I'm Say that because we are looking for girls, you know. And oh, wow. for, uh, more girls. All the companies uh, post at sea and, and in the post are saying, well, have you got any female graduates coming or coming through? Wow, that is so good to know. That's awesome to know. Do you have any uh, girls in the program at the moment, Case? Yeah, yeah. Typically, we have about 10% of our students are girls. That's awesome. Um, so we have two or three in, in class at the moment in the nautical side, and I think two, uh, three in the nautical and two in the engineering program. Awesome. Wow, that's awesome. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely more girls. <laughs> Sign up, Gina. There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay, so without saying any names, can you please um, talk to us about one of the success stories that you have? Um, you know, one of your students, how successful have they become, you know, are they earning that much money, where are they based, that type of thing. Well, Steve, yeah, that was the, the biggest question that I, that you actually, mm. the most difficult question, because we've got so many great oh. stories uh, oh. of our school. Mm. Um, when I was look, looking at our, our graduate profiles, we have, at this moment, three of our graduates working in Holt America Line, that's a big cruise ship company, okay. in okay. Seattle, in the, in the main office in Seattle. In the different in different areas, and they graduated uh, eight, nine, ten years ago. Um, we have another success story. Uh, I suppose you, you may have heard of Cunard, is one of the oldest uh, cruise uh, or passenger ship companies in the world. The Commodore, that is the captain of all the captains of the fleet, he just retired uh, from the sea. Um, well, last year, he lives in Sydney at the moment with his wife, but he was a graduate from our, our school one way wow. back. Um, then another uh, graduate, um, he started sailing on a super yacht as, as a deck officer. He became master uh, uh, captain on a super yacht. Uh, he stopped that, became a pilot, and then he started thinking about a few problems they had with people getting on board and off the ship. He developed an app, 
that app he sold uh, two years ago for multi-million dollars and, and he still runs that same company now. Wow. And so these are just three three off your pick, but uh, I could go on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. My That's gosh. awesome. That's cool. That's so good to know and good for us to know as well so we can keep promoting those success stories mm. um, from our School of Maritime. Another fun fact time case, um, describe your few weeks in lockdown using one word. Ah, work. <laughs> work. Work. <laughs> yeah, two days before the lockdown began, we moved all our maritime school programs online. Mm. And mm. right from the Monday before lockdown, we have been teaching online uh, ever since. We took a break over Easter, uh, but that was the only break that we've had. And, and we continue doing so till we're back in the alert level too. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you so much for that, um, Case. So at the moment, everything is online. So you're doing everything through Canvas, through M MIT Canvas? We do everything uh, through MIT Canvas, apart from interviews like this. Uh, we come <laughs> But we like our conferences in, in Canvas, which is really, really a good program as well. And yeah, we were prepared for that and, and we just continue. Um, thank you, Keith. Thank you. Okay, so I've got our final question. Um, why choose MIT? Why choose your program? Choose MIT. Um, yeah. Well, if you want an exciting career, <laughs> MIT. And if you want a really exciting career, you want to travel the globe uh, for a while. And, and then you want to have a management, a leadership position in New Zealand, making a difference in New Zealand, even like say under COVID-19 conditions, making a difference keeping New Zealand going and moving forward, you come to the New Zealand Maritime School and you study in nautical science and marine engineering or electrotechnical uh, areas and, and become the leader that you that they can be, that they can they should be. Well, yep, I think I think you <laughs> might have sold this program to a few students after this interview. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much um, again, Case, for your time. Um, so if you're watching and you're keen to know more about Maritime, please head to our website or feel free to give us a, um, an email. Send us an email on experience at manuko.ac.nz or if you'd like to get in contact with Case um, personally, feel free to drop us an email on the experience email and we'll send your details over to um, to Case. Um, again, Case, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much for um, answering our questions as well. Yeah. Um, and on behalf of MIT, we'd like to thank everyone that's tuning in at the moment um, don't forget to keep staying tuned if you don't already um, follow us on our social media accounts give us a like on our MIT Facebook page follow us on Instagram and um, yeah stay tuned and we hope to see everyone at our next lecturer interview thank you hey Gina Stevie thank you very much and I hope to see many of the students coming to us bye thank you bye thank Case you. MIT where the best makers are made <laughs>